Okay, this is Yuva versus Reti 1920. Yuva's playing white and he plays e4. Reti plays c6 and now a very interesting second move against the Karakhan. Instead of playing the standard d4, white plays a fincetto, a queenside fincetto with b3, in very much in hypermodern style. The hypermoderns emphasized the idea that you could attack the center from, from using pieces like fincetto bishops. And actually it was Reti himself playing white who often played knight f3 and then g3. So here Bretti is on the black side of white playing a fianchetto system. And Reti also just simply occupies the center now with d5. So he's expecting his center to be under pressure from the fianchetto bishop. After e takes d5, c takes d5, white carries on with bishop b2. Now, Reti plays knight c6, and Yuva plays g3. Very creative play. The bishop perhaps could have gone to b5, but from g2 it's exerting pressure on d5. Black continues occupation in the center with e5. After bishop g2, we can see now that both central squares are, are under attack from these bishops. And this bishop here is attacking d5. Um, so bishop e6 was played, and then white continued to pressure on e5 um, with queen e2. So there's now a lot of pressure building up here. Black defends with queen c7, and white plays knight f3. So again, this, this square is under a lot of pressure from these pieces white bishop and rook should black be tempted to play e4 well e4 has a problem that maybe white can just play um, knight d4 here with a comfortable position well let's have a look at knight d4 first anyway actually knight d4 fails because knight takes d4 bishop takes c4 black would have bishop Queen takes c2 here, so knight d4 is no good. So was there another reason why e4 was rejected? Possibly knight g5 is, is white's best move here. And then my analytical assessment is saying knight b4 is a good move here. Um, but maybe uh, white's not too worried about c2. Maybe white can just play knight a3. And let's assume knight takes c2, the greedy knight c2. Black's queen um, is protecting the knight, but the kingside pieces are not there. So maybe just knight takes c2, queen takes c2. And possibly white's got good enough compensation here now with bishop c3. Just with the idea of casting and later gaining a tempo on black's queen. This could be trouble for black. Um, let's see an example. Bishop e7, queen takes e6, f e6. Bishop g7 is, is punishing, so black's having a tricky way of developing the pieces. Let's say knight f6 instead. So, um, so here, knight f6 instead. Is a new variation. There's queen b5 check here. So this is also dangerous. So b7 grim free so bishop d7 queen takes b7 rook d8 castles and whites got the better of it now I think uh, black is, let's, let's um, so the isolated pawn and, and black's queen here is, is a target um, queen d3 for example Rook f e1, and um, there's, there's still a lot of pressure on black position. Bishop e7, bishop f1, queen c2, rook e c1, black's queen is trapped. So that just demonstrates that um, 
So after e4, not knight d4 because the knight takes d4, but instead knight g5 is, is a good move. Not worrying about this knight d4. So in the game though, um, this wasn't played. What was played was f6, just solidifying e5. After castles, bishop d6, knight c3 was played. A6. So the knight on c3, although blocking the c pawn, can potentially play knight a4 later. Now, white exploited the pin on the e pawn by playing d4. Um, black just played knight g e7. And after taking, perhaps black should have played f takes e5. This might be possible because. If knight g5, then bishop g8. I'm not sure if white's clearly better. Well, it moves like queen h5 check might be tempting. But also, um, bishop h3, let's have a quick look at bishop h3. Perhaps black can simply play h6 here. See, knight e6, is that harmful for black? Bishop takes e6. Bishop takes e6. Maybe this knight d4 here. Forking queen and bishop. Queen g4. Knight takes e6. Queen takes e6. Maybe queen d7. And um, possibly black is okay here. But in the game, black perhaps controversially took with the bishop, giving up the bishop pair. White snapped up this bishop and still has pressure now on black center, especially d5. Black d really doesn't want to play d4 here because knight e4 is quite a tasty knight, which is um, threatening knight g5 and knight c5. White still reserves undermining options with c3 as well. So this looks much better for white here. Instead, black plays castle queenside. After rook fe1, launches uh, quite an ambitious kingside attack, perhaps too ambitious. White now has latent pressure on black center, plays knight a4, unleashing this bishop. Um, also, there's knight c5 in the air. Black played e4, and white now simply further undermines this center and further exploits this pin. So it's getting very uncomfortable for black with f3. So black's almost forced to find something and plays h4 to continue this coordinated attack, at least for queen and rook. Um, but <coughs> one of the best ways <coughs> of countering a flank attack is a center um, counter attack. So he takes on the center and takes on the center again and this actually now wins material. Because after knight take, after bishop takes d5, rather, bishop takes d5, <coughs> knight takes d5, queen e6, winning material, king b8, rook takes d5. Although black can now forcibly get the queen with this move, rook e8, but white just is willing to take the two rooks for the queen and to be material up. And here plays a nifty little move, rook dd8 with the idea that if knight takes d8 there will be bishop d4 check and now if king b8 bishop e5 skewing queen and king and if king a8 then it's equally bad because of knight b6 and if king b8 then bishop b5 again and if king a7 here then knight d5 so this is quite a sounds move to pursue the attack threatening rook a8 mate black gives an escape square for the king with b6 and now white plays another very interesting move bishop a3 keeping the rook immune if knight takes d8 then rook e7 skewering queen and king still with material ahead g takes h2 was played king h1 Queen f7. Now there is a slight threat of perpetual checks going on here. White put a stop to that immediately with an interference tactic. Now with uh, rook ee7. 
blocking the Queen's control of d7 off the knight takes. There's also uh, a forcing mate here. The king is being mated because after king a, knight takes b6, king b8, bishop e5, bishop d6 is checkmate. Well done, Yuva. Uh, 